You know, where the fuck Dub at, man? Where the fuck he go? Yo, ass is fine. Boy, that guy Dub, and I'm back with another video. What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Deuce from the. What's up? Me and my big bro. Fuck this mill. He said he gonna teach me how to wrestle, man. I'm gonna win the belt. The boy Dub Deuce in the building. What up, what up, what up? It is that guy Dub, and I'm back with another video. How you guys doing at the end of the day? Shout it. I'm good money. Now, today, 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 we got a special guest in the building. We're coming off a little controversy off a post that I made a couple of weeks ago. And you some got me in some hot water. Now, we have a special guest in that special guest named Mari in the building. Now, before we get to kicking things off and talking our talk, you first, I got to uh, make sure that you guys go down to the description box down below and click my affiliate link for Dream Alive University. Type in a discount code that guy dub. And you saying uh, get 15% off of your order. Yeah. With the, that being said, this guy right here, this is Little Dub. You guys can uh, holler at CIA Customs. And you can get your uh, custom action figure made. He's not going to look as good, look as good as Little Dub or me. But hey, we're gonna get it done. But anyway, you saying, Mari, what's happening, my sister? Hey, what's going on? N not much, not much. Now we saying we came uh, to be here because of the post that I made to saying that um, if uh, a woman needs child support to uh. If a woman needs child support to pay her bills and give custody to the father. Now, first of all, what are your thoughts on that? I feel like, first, it's not just about monetary value. I think when it comes down to who has custody of the children, usually the mother is more emotionally set for that because mm -hmm. that's just a mother's thing is, is to raise a, a child. So that's my first thought. The second thought is it's way easier for a man to afford more when he is not taking care of a child. You get what I'm saying? Because you have mm -hmm. somebody watching your child. So you don't have to get up. You ain't got to pay no daycare. You ain't got to worry about if that child is sick. You get up and you go when you want to. Your your possibilities are, are endless. The way you can make money, you can go from a day job to a night job. You can you know, kind of make your schedule as you please. But mm -hmm. with that mom, she's always going to be limited to what's going on with her children. Absolutely. Now, honey, what you saying you have any um, rebuttals to that? I mean, that's 100% because, like you were saying, if, if, if I'm working right now and I get a call from my job and saying your daughter is sick, I then, and she needs to be picked up immediately, I then have to leave my job, risk losing the way that I provide for my child to go and tend to her. And nine times out of 10, that is always on the mud. So that means if I have to leave work early and not to mention if I have to call off after that because it's something major, I'm missing money. So that right there is a big factor in maybe not being able to afford everything all the time because unforeseen things happen and that causes financial challenges. Hey, absolutely not. I will say, do you think that if a father takes on that role as the primary care, you send a parent, you don't think they would have to go through those same type of issues? Or do you think it's easier for like if a man were to take take on that responsibility that like he could hire a nanny or, or things like that? Do you think he's like, do you think it would equally the, the plan for it will be equal if the father took care of the child? Mari? No, I'm, I know single dads. So I know whoever has custody is the person who's going to be limited in some type of way. Mm -hmm. It's always going to be, even if it comes down to rent. Like I was looking for places in Cobb County when I think I, when I was going to move back there and that one mm -hmm. bedroom and two bedroom, that's like a $400 jump. Easy. Facts. And then if, there's like a law in Georgia. If the landlords go by that law, where if you have a male child and a female child, you have to have separate rooms for them. So then that's another jump, maybe two, three hundred dollars for a three bedroom. Right. So it's it's always something that is going to make the plan feel uneven. I don't feel Absolutely. like a man should be 
in a chokehold when it comes down to paying for child support, though. I'm going to say that. <clears throat> you say, now, well, I'll express this right here now. We can we can sit there and say, like, where you live is one thing, but, like, let's say e extra expenditures. You said, let's say, like, um, you could have, uh, you said, I guess, a, a, a Nissan Maxima. But no, mm -hmm. you said you have a you said a higher you said stature or you said level of you said things that you want. So maybe you want that Mercedes AMG. Now you necessarily can't afford that Mercedes AMG. So you said you start dipping into child support money to pay for this said a AMG. Now you could, like I said, work inside your budget and get that Nissan Maxima. But you said, but at the end of the day, anything above your means is your responsibility. Do you agree? I agree to a <laughs> no, I, I to a certain degree I do, but you gotta mm -hmm. remember if I want this nice car, I'm limited because of the kids, <laughs> mm -hmm. so That's I can't back. do what I need to do. Like, do you, do you get what I'm saying? It it's all it mm -hmm. relates to every aspect of life. So yeah, you should probably try to live be uh live within your means, but still and all. When it comes down to children, like I can't even, I, I just can't even cover everything. We have to cover mm -hmm. the gas that gets them here to there. We got to, we got to cover the car note. We got to cover the insurance. So if you have to dip into the child support to pay a bill, I feel like that's fine. Now, when you start in, like bothering that man, like I need more money, I need more money. That's where the problem lies. Okay, if you can do what you need to do for your kids with that child support, then you good. But when you start, oh, I need more, I need more, I need more, then that's when it's just like, man, that's that's a little bit much. So and see, like this, like this is the conversation I love to have because I know I got beat up in the comment section over that post. I don't care. I'm I'm here for it. <laughs> but <laughs> you just, and like they were coming out of the woodwork, but you saying, like I said, sometimes hit dogs will holler. Sometimes you say you like you have people that only think on the surface and, and they're, they're jaded in their use in their aspects on how they look at things. But you say, like I said, yeah, a lot of the times, like it is what it is. You know, like like you just mentioned earlier, but you know, if a father has to take care of the child by himself, then you say all that burden is on him. If a mother has to take care of the child, the burden's on her, you know, and things like that. But the bigger conversation that we're used to not having is that the fact that, especially in the black community, because we are looked at as less than anyway, you say, and we're all looked at as we make poor decisions. And a lot of times, some of our actions may coincide with that. And I think you said to the broader sphere of the you said the universe, people will take that aspect. Like you look at uh, Chicago, we'll just we'll say, or inner cities anywhere, and you see a more baby mamas than you see families but that's actually not the case because if you go down these streets you see more families than baby mamas but you said but they only show us that so how does it hit you when these the stereotypical things are brought to the forefront and you said to try to be projected as it's law when it's really not like that okay uh for me i grew up in a household with a mom and dad so I don't really know too much about other people's situations. I don't think the black community is so terrible when it comes down to dads. I think it's not a black thing. I think it's a low, I don't want to say low income thing, but I will say that because I know that I know white men that don't pay their uh, child support. So mm -hmm. it's, it's a one is a personal thing. It's where your heart is. And two, it's low income because I feel like most, most low income people, uh, people they're not they have i guess mental it's a mental thing you know what i mean mm -hmm. does that make sense i Absolutely. can't I, yeah i can't really describe it but it, I, it's definitely not a black thing it's definitely not a black thing yeah, of course it's not a black thing because you said there's this scenario happens across the racial spectrum but you said of course throughout history us as black people we're the we're the demonized people you said <laughs> Oh my gosh, do you send these Negroes? You know, <laughs> no, of course we're gonna get the heat. We get the heat for everything. Everything that we do that's not up to par is gonna be a light shine on us. That's because we're the chosen people. And that's just what I'm gonna look I love how at. you said that, by the way. <laughs>
now you said when i initially made the post you saying it's like it was pretty broad like i said if you need child support to pay your bills you don't need custody you're you muted it there we go yeah now i didn't say women i didn't say men i didn't say sheep i didn't say dogs i didn't use it's like but like I said, looking in this comment section about the, you said, the amount of, it seemed like more women agreed with the post than didn't. Because most women are the custodial parents. So, you know, that's mm -hmm. going to be something that they're going to chime in more often than men. Mm -hmm. More. It's, it's the woman who feels the part of everything. Like you're saying, like, you guys don't have the limitations that we have. Like, there, I know I have friends who had to turn down certain jobs that were going to be very lucrative for them because they didn't have child care or mm -hmm. because they didn't have assistance like help in case of something happening or you can't take a certain shift or you can't finish your degree. You have to put stuff on hold. And all of that ties in financially, I feel like, because the situation with a man supporting his child, if he's not in the home, he feels like he doesn't need to. He almost feels like that's your business that your responsibility and that's a small part of taking care of a child because you're not in the home anymore what about the emotional and the emotional issues you know every child is different um parenting is different from day to day and with each child is different there's so much of a, a mother has to stretch herself so thin for everything so paying child support is a small part of what we go through providing almost all the needs especially if a woman is doing it on her own like like a man you don't have the same you you can go to work if if one of your kids are sick right now you don't have to worry about calling off you don't have to worry about what will happen you don't have to worry about getting written up fired lose money that day none of that mm -hmm. none and we have been through that at some point whether we had one kid or several and it makes it even more challenging to be the kind of parent you want and provide the type of life that you want. And also, I don't know of any women who can get pregnant on their own. You cannot uh, okay. get pregnant you without a man. Yeah. There, I love that you put God in it because he gave us two parents for a reason. It's not a one person mm -hmm. job. It's very, very hard. It's very, very hard. Women, we weren't, and I, people, please don't come for me. Please don't come for me. But I'm going to say it. <laughs> we are not meant to be going out they're making the money and stuff. We are the ones that raise the children that tend to the house. This is just biblical. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Can, can you say that again for the people in the back? <laughs> we are supposed to be. Uh, I don't. Oh, you gonna have everybody gonna be like block or cancel? Oh, they're gonna I be on your ass like back pockets. Cancel. Yes, we are supposed to be tending to the children. That is our main responsibility. If you can do that and you have another job, cool. But as women, that's not what we are here for. We, the, we're here to get married. And I, I was telling my my fiance about this before. The Bible does not say women love your husband. It says men. It says husband love your wife. And that is because we are made to be taken care of. And when we are taken care of, that's when we are loved. Okay, that's when we start to love. We start to love as we get taken care of. So the man y'all are supposed to provide. You're supposed to be with the children. You're supposed to care for the sick children. You're supposed to feed the family. You're supposed, that's what we're supposed to do. So the fact that you got this one person that has to be mom and dad, that's not what we're made to do. It's not what we're made to do as women, okay. as men. It's mm -hmm. not. So. Okay. Well, Ethan, like uh, <laughs> expounding on the last point you made, you said, so like, how do you feel about these women? Because, you know, us men, we don't get hardly anything. You said we get socks for, for birthdays and Christmas. And things like that. You said the one day we get out of the year, you said it's Father's Day. How do you feel when you see so many women you saying wishing themselves a happy Father's Day? <laughs> if you feel like because I've done it before and I had to let that go because I'm like, girl, you ain't gonna never, you're gonna always be single. If you're gonna be a single dad, you are always gonna be single. <laughs> so if if that what makes you feel good as a mom. To be like, I, I, I can do it all. I've been doing it all. Then more power to you. Like, you want to say fathers. At the end of the day, that's that. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I'm not going to do that no more. Um, I think it's more of a funny thing 
nowadays. I don't think people being that. I don't know. Maybe. But I think people just be like, you know, happy Father's Day to me as a dig to let other people know that they baby daddies ain't really daddies. I, that's how I, when anytime I've ever said that, it's just been like a, yeah, because I'm doing it by myself. So happy Father's Day to me. I don't think it's Thank really you. to get no glory. If it is, you know, Okay, you said, but like, well, how does it hit you? Like, if somebody like, 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 if I saw your post, it said "Happy Father's Day" to me, and I was like, okay, you coming off with that little masculine energy? You saying, wh where's this masculine? Energy? Are you outside throwing a football with your son? Or are you just mad? <laughs> you saying, you saying, which one is it? It's just being mad, you know. Sometimes <laughs> we just gotta get it off some type of way. You ain't, you know, mm -hmm. you ain't, th you ain't shooting your baby daddy in the head. You just saying. Hey, it's, I'm I'm the I'm the baby daddy and the baby mama. You ain't nobody, and so it just it's a little hurt. It's a little mm -hmm. insult. I like I said, I'm kind of over it. I'm like I'm 30 now, so I'm above all that little. Oh, Jesus, you just you just made me feel <laughs> awful. I just said 40. I mean, oh Jesus, wept. Yeah. Well, yeah, we, we, you look good. Yeah, both well, look thank good. You. Thank you. Thank you. And I'll be 40 <laughs> in January, so yeah. Yeah, you're good. I, thank you. I've been there. I've also wished myself a happy Father's Day on Father's Day. I've had friends do that um, to me also. And I really, I feel like for a while I wore that proudly because I felt mm -hmm. like I'm doing everything by myself. I'm not going to give credit to someone if they are not contributing. And, and a lot of the times, there are men who will choose not to contribute. They'll choose to have jobs that are under the table so that they don't have to provide out of spite. Or another thing is they'll try to dictate what you're supposed to do with the support. Now, if my child is living in the home with me and I have to pay rent, utilities and all that, it's not going to all be covered by child support. No one's giving enough to fund our complete lifestyle. So I am doing my part as well. So therefore, if I have a car to transport my children. They're benefiting. Mm -hmm. Heat, gas, I mean, gas, you know, um, water, food, all that. They're benefiting. So to, to tell a woman, a mother, I'm not giving you money because I don't want you spending it on yourself and whatnot. You're saying that you don't care the quality of life that your child is going to have because it's also the other parent's responsibility, regardless of whatever happened between the two. And mm -hmm. I think... The, the biggest challenge we have a lot now is that there are too many men willing to put their kids through all this torture because they're mad at the mom. And then they keep going out and making more kids or they'll get with another <laughs> woman and they'll support her kids, but neglect their own. That's all like, it's crazy. And that makes it harder for the mother that then the child will eventually feel that. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. let me go ahead and use it. Let me preface this by using it because uh, you, you you feel the the heat coming from this side of the I table. I feel it because the pain of the situation is so heavy. Like I'm okay. I'm there with you. I'm the first baby mom on one side, and then I'm the fourth baby mom on the other side. So I'm I get a lot of child support issues and complaints, and yeah, it's a lot. Okay, well, you said, I'm just I'm just gonna clear the air with me because you said a, a lot of people said that I was bitter in this post before I met my <laughs> wife. I didn't have any kids. She had three when I met her, so I got three certified pre owns. Yes, I do, <laughs> and I love every last one of them. You said, but uh, and we've had two together since we've been together. We've been married mm -hmm. eight years, going on nine. So you know, like yeah. So the stuff, the the heat you feel from this section of the table that is before mm -hmm. me. You said so like. Mm -hmm. yeah. Cause I'm not finna have y'all. Oh no, you beside her, so I know she ain't talking about you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just had to clear the air. No, I think it's that. I think it's the hit dog my holla thing. Like mm, I don't know, I don't know. My cousin, he's a single dad. I think he has 13 kids now. <laughs> Jesus, what? I think he has 13 kids I now. I wouldn't trust that nigga to pull out the driveway. Jesus, <laughs> no, he ain't pulling out nowhere. 13 <laughs> kids, and they range. I think. I think one is maybe one year younger than me, and then he has like a two-year-old. So, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> and he he struggled, and he did what he could. And when his older kids was able to watch their younger kids, uh, his younger kids, then they would watch the kids, and he would work double shifts. And it's a lot of stuff. For okay. me, it was I just had that uh, I had a notion where it was just like these kids depend on you, so you're gonna do whatever, you know. Mm -hmm. So. I used to have a warehouse job 
and I used to <laughs> I used to dance. And when I say you go from one job and then to the next and you see your kids for maybe about an hour in between and then mm -hmm. you go you go pick them up from the expensive babysitter and then go home, sleep for two hours, get them ready to go back to the babysitter so you go back to the warehouse. It's, it's painful. It's not natural. And it took me a long time to get a bond with my children because mm -hmm. I was just so worried about lights being on, food being on the table. And then of course, you you know, you do, you do the defects thing and you get your little food stamps and they just give you whatever the little bitty amounts that they give you. and they help you with childcare during the day, but then you gotta turn around and pay for child. It's a lot, it's a lot. And me making sure my kids were taken care of and had what they needed, it didn't give me no, no time emotionally with them. Mm -hmm. When I was with them and, and the days I had to take off, which is usually Sunday, I didn't wanna mm -hmm. be bothered. Like, why are y'all crying? Yeah. I'm tired. They're babies. That's why <laughs> they're crying because they're babies and they want your attention, but you just don't have it. And the dad is like, I'm getting my life together. You got this. You've always been good. Right. Well, I can attest to that because me, I've been a truck driver for 20 years. And um, so I spent a lot of time over the road. And you said my two youngest ch children, I didn't get to bond with as much as I'd like to because I was so tired by the end of the week. Just like mm -hmm. you, you I have a uh, you saying a, a moniker that I say you and usually when it's, it's fuck them kids, <laughs> period. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and I've heard it. And I had to come off the road. You saying we had some issues going on, so I came off the road and um, just the bond with the I'm relearning all of my children. Using at this point, mm -hmm. using like I still can't stand none of those little assholes, but I love. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> But it's so like I can attest to exactly what you're saying coming from a, a male perspective when you saying when it comes to that now you saying shifting gears on that you saying like do you think that like in your mind what is the disparity problems when it comes to women getting resources and men getting resources for you said for a single father or for a single mother uh, so for single fathers I feel like they I think it's a pride thing like go to the defects that. office and wait in the line and go to that wick office and do the nutrition classes and get what you need until you get on your feet mm -hmm. that's not men are just taught to hustle 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 okay and then when they get the person they can't hustle no more they just sitting on on the couch like that's a big thing if you low income and you need resources go get them resources that's not just for us one more time say it again for the people in the back <laughs> The resources are not just for women. They're not just for women. I love single parents, man. I'm not gonna lie. I'm, I love single parents. Um, I I didn't grow up with it, but now that I am, a, well, I was a single parent for a long time. It's just like wow, like the, it's it's really a life changing thing. Like how do kids? I don't. I wouldn't even imagine like living without a dad. So how do kids grow up with just a mom? And they're okay. Like I, mm -hmm. I still look at my kids. I'm like, y'all kind of fucked up, ain't y'all? <laughs> Can't with the monitor. Fucking kids. Tell y'all daddy wasn't around. <laughs> but yeah, it's just that. Like that's why I love single parents, like especially the ones that actually like care and do for their children. Not the ones that just be dropping them off at grandma's house or whatever. But like the ones mm -hmm. that actually like ride for their kids and and go above and beyond. Like, I, my hats off to you. Hats off. To yeah, you. Definitely. Now mm -hmm. you said uh, there's a YouTube channel that uh, my wife and I we watch quite frequently. I don't know if you're uh, familiar with this, but it's called a uh, Pink Book Lessons. Are you familiar with the channel? Mm -mm. Okay. After we get off here, I'm gonna send you the link to her channel. It's, it's mm -hmm. like it's kind of is going on to what we're talking about, but it's like basically talking about like making sure God is in everything and he's in like how uh you, certain people's lifestyles are out of order. Now this, the last video she had I think was uh yesterday, and she was talking about um. How uh, Kevin Hunter, you said no, uh, Wendy Williams, the uh, ex-husband, how his baby, his baby mother has left him because the money has ran dry, or, you, or what have you, mm -hmm. and then basically saying that Wendy's also no victim because she knew about the you said the side piece the entire time, but where they messed up is you said the side piece getting pregnant when they had an agreement or whatever whatnot. So, with me giving you the I guess the synopsis of that particular case study, how does that hit you? 
I don't say this, and it's going to hurt me to say this because that's why my life is the way it is. When you live outside the will of God, there's always going to be dire consequences. Mm-hmm. And that's it. And sometimes you got to overextend yourself, overexhaust yourself. Sometimes you end up getting humiliated in the process, like Wendy. Uh, sometimes you end up in, in situations like the girl. She was in it for the money. Now she's, now she's gone, but she got a kid. Like, mm-hmm. it's it's never going to add up the way that it's supposed to add up because you're out of the will of God. Mm-hmm. Honey, I believe, you... that. Yeah, I believe that wholeheartedly. I do. I, I also feel like <clears throat> there's too many of us parents that are trying to raise children from a place of like um, pride and ego. Mm-hmm. Um, just going back to even public assistance and getting help, uh, a man is less likely by a lot to go sit in the office and get assistance for anything, medical, anything. Um, and we have done it and we will do it for our kids. It doesn't mean that we're not ashamed or we don't feel less than because we do. The thing is, when a woman is parenting, she puts everything to the back burner to provide. And whether you're tired, whether you're brokenhearted, whether you're broken and suffering, all that, the moms always have to figure it out. We don't have enough time to sit in our mess or the bad decisions or anything like Amanda's. And we have to figure everything out all the time. And I feel like even when the man does have his kids and the mom's not around, he'll still probably call the mom. Uh, your kid needs this or this is going on with your kid and all that. They never... They never can handle it the same way as us, you know, and and it's so much more to parenting than just providing. But I know this, if that extra hundred dollars a month is going to give me one extra day at home with my kids, why wouldn't you want to help in that way? He's OK. Yeah. You said, let's let's play devil's advocate here. OK, let's say you got a goofy ass pookie and you saying that extra hundred dollars is not going towards my child, but it's going towards you saying your pookie ass boyfriend's PlayStation account. That's the thing, though. So you can't if you're not in the home with the child, you can't dictate where that money is going unless you just provide everything yourself and bring it to your kids or the child. You can't dictate what she should do with it. You all you can do is hope that it's being used on your kids and and whatever they need. But you have to remember that. We still have bills still. Your child support is not taking care of the whole household and all the needs. It still has to come from us as well. And we still have to deal with the kids as well. And the thing is some but some women have to work two jobs and three jobs. So the kids are basically watching themselves or being raised by outsiders because they have to make up for the lack of support financially. And that is needed. Mm -hmm. That is needed. I mean, I just don't understand how. Men get mad. You have some men out there that will threaten the woman. They they will make sure they don't work and everything out of spite just to make sure that they don't have to give a dime for that kid. And that makes it 10 times harder for the mother, not just financially, but emotionally, because the stuff you have to you have to deal with and go through and do and you have to pick up so many pieces. It's exhausting. OK, now, Mari and honey, you said, OK, I'm gonna, we're going to use and uh, bring back a story from, I guess it was last year. OK, let's say I'm said baby daddy of course i'm no, i'm nobody's baby daddy i'm a husband boom boom shot. <laughs> but um say that you have children using outside of the ch- the child or children that we have together and i do what that guy did and i guess was detroit or whatever it was and i bring my child or children to mcdonald's and say fuck them kids to the rest of your children is that right or should i just because you just mentioned you said providing for my child right mm-hmm. so honey you just like go ahead and you, how do you, do you feel like there should be some kind of obligation when it comes to other said children now that obligation <clears throat> is the obligation i don't feel like that but i feel like if i already had kids and you got with me when i had kids we were together at some point and you were obviously helping with all of the kids Fucking why kids. switch it up Right. Why switch it up? Because again, I'm, you're the kids. <laughs> right. What parent would do that anyway, unless they're trying to be spiteful? Fuck them kids. That, Go ahead, Mari. Like some mentality. Remember the the mental state that I was talking about? Mm-hmm. Yeah. the The fact that you would be around this woman and her children, 
and have a baby with her after you've been around her children and only bring mm. your son McDonald's. Like if you only got money for your son, just take your son, go to the park or something like that. But if you have it, you could get a little dollar chicken. What's it called? Make chicken for them kids or something. You've been around them kids. You know what I mean? So now when you bring your son McDonald's and he's sitting there eating and the kids are looking at you like, we used to like him. Well, we ain't get nothing. You know? It's, it it, that's petty. That's petty. Yeah. <clears throat> Recording stuff like that is petty. And I know people don't expect go, to go through stuff like that. But as a mom, I think naturally you already just kind of like know what's up. <clears throat> like, you know mm -hmm. how you can handle a situation. Me, it wouldn't have been no back and forth. It would have been like, little JoJo, go over there with your daddy. Y'all, y'all stay out there. Go to the park or something. Eat your McDonald's. We'll see you. Mm. And you come back. That's what it been with me. It wouldn't have been no back and forth. Cause then you know the kids they hear you. The yeah. Kids hear and especially when you're yelling, they want to know what's going on. Exactly. <laughs> we was all kids once, and we was all nosy. We peeping through the window. See every. I don't care. I don't give you a damn if you black, white, Puerto Rican, whether you Indian, Hispanic, and you Pakistani. If you had blinds in your house, some, some, at some point, your blinds was fucked up because your nosy ass was in them. <laughs> Yo, so kids was <laughs> Big fact. We want we want to know what's going on. Now, <clears throat> one thing is like I, I try to teach on my platform is like I said we we talk about mental health and as you can mm -hmm. see using like. You know, with my wife, when she speaks, she's coming from a real place. Uh -huh. And you so like, what would you say to, because you said, as you mentioned earlier, you've been a single mother before and you've been a single mother before. You just like, what advice would you give to women? Because you said like, a lot of it's, you said, a lot of it's trusting people, but then also some of it is also just making bad pussy decisions. Because I mean, I'm not even going to uh -huh. cap to you because some of those niggas make bad dick decisions every day. You said so. What advice would you give to women on that? Go ahead, Mari. Women that don't have kids yet? <laughs> uh, I would say this. You got to be very selective of who you choose to procreate with. You mm -hmm. do. A lot of people are just narcissistic and they're very good at hiding stuff. But let's be for real. A lot of us see them red flags and we'd be like, mm, it's pink, it's orange. It's, mm, you know what I mean? That thing is red. Stop playing with that man, okay? If you want to get good D, then that's fine. You could get good D. Wrap it up. Get on some birth control. Do what you got to do to protect yourself. Because if you can look at a man and be like, good D, but I could never have his kids. If I would have if I would have really looked at my kids' dad, the, the my first two kids' dad, I would have looked at him and I would have been like, okay. He a little slow. He got anger issues. And every time he's upset, he ready to leave and take all my stuff. Hmm. Is that the type of person I want to be with and the type of person I want to have kids with? No. Two, you have to make sure, like, your, your relationship and people just, I don't understand how people can, well, I do understand how you can make that, um, must I don't want to say mistake because kids aren't mistakes, but how you can make the decision of having kids. But kids are lifetime decisions. So I feel mm -hmm. like if you're going to have a kid with somebody, that's somebody that you need to really see your life uh, unfold, un, unfolding with. You know what I mean? That's the person that you want to settle down with. There should be no doubts in your mind. That's how secure you should be with that person. And sometimes it's going to take you longer to get secure with people but the more damage you you give by giving yourself and then having a baby with this person having a baby with that person like you're just damaging yourself and you don't even know it because you have these babies and they're so beautiful and they're sweet and they give you happiness for a little bit but them babies are attached to that man that man's family, his spirits, his generational curses, your family, your generational curses. You're just inviting all that damage and all those demons and all everything in. And it may not even be that it's all just negative. But in today's world, when you have somebody that will have a kid with you and walk away, that is that's an issue. Like that's a deeply rooted issue. And I usually when that happens. You could look at that person's dad and that person's dad's not around. And the person's dad that was their dad is not around. 
you usually see that. So, um, be careful who you have kids with. Be careful who you have kids with. Two, don't be petty in front of the kids. Three, don't be petty on Facebook. I just, I just went through a whole thing. Y'all just read me my whole life in this podcast. Just <clears throat> pray about it. Like, I, I remember I used to cry because I'm like, why this man don't love my kids? Like, he about to have a baby with somebody else. And he just dismissed my kids completely. And they were a little bitty, too. They were just so sweet. I'm like, why you don't love my kids? I was just crying, crying, crying. I should have been praying. I'm asking myself questions I can't give myself answers to. I should have been praying. Because God, but he really, he bought me through. He really bought me through. And I wouldn't have got there without. But every time I try to lean on on my own understanding, then I end up in a situation where it's more damaging to me, you know? And yeah. that's why I had one baby daddy for a very, very long time. Cause I just was like, I could never, I could never. <laughs> and so now I got my little, my little cute five month old and she's just adorable. And her dad is everything and he's great, but really watch what y'all have kids with and make sure it's like a long term forever thing. Okay. Okay, honey. <laughs> a try past 18 we always be like well you have to do with the other parent until the kid's 18 no it's beyond that it's for life for real if there's family gatherings your your kid gets married has babies <clears throat> major things going on you're going to see that other parent and that could be way beyond 18 so you have to be able to i think what we miss it first of all you shouldn't be really young having kids because i <laughs> I'm 39 now, and at 19 and 29, I was a whole different person. And I know a lot more about life and myself at this age than I did when I was 19 and 29 because I had my first kid when I was 20. And, you know, I was never really planning on being a mother. That really wasn't my thing, I thought. But I also didn't take the steps to protect myself. So I guess I shouldn't say that. Um, But I feel like if, you're young having babies, you're not emotionally mature and you don't even know how to handle life yet. And here you are now trying to raise a life, trying to provide for a life. And you, you still don't have a clue about yourself and life. So when you're young, you're not going to pick the same person you would. My 18 year old self, 17 year old self would not pick the same man as I would if I was 30. 29 and all that. You know, I know a lot more than I did then. So I feel like maturity comes with age and experience and wait as long as you can, because even if things don't work out, if you know that person's character, you know, like we might not get along, we might not work out anymore, but I know you're still going to be in your kid's life. I know that's who you won't walk out. And until you feel like that about someone, I really don't feel like we should create life with them. Because they, it creates broken homes and it creates a lot, it, it creates a lot of mental baggage. And how are we going to raise our children to be certain ways if we are so messed up? And it goes far beyond financially, you know. So I feel like wait for a while to have kids. In, in and a long time, right? <laughs> well, I'm just going to speak for myself because you said I was. This is actually my second marriage. I was married. I got married. I don't know, 22? Yeah, I was 22 and it lasted about five years. God, I didn't have no kids with this mofo. He's in, nobody knows who she is, but I'm just going to give a basic synopsis. Just, but you were trying to, though. You I was trying to, yeah. but you know what I'm saying? It was just kind of hard because, you know what I'm saying, this, this mofo was fucking the neighborhood for nickel bags, but that's neither here nor there. You said, but oh. and I, when I'd ask why, well, you work too much. <laughs> Bitch, how we going to keep the lights on if I don't work? The fuck. <laughs> anyway, moving on. Now I'm using now I'm I'm exclude exuding my emotional trauma using within to this conversation. We're not trying to do that. You said, but uh, also <laughs> another thing I, I teach on my platform platform is that you said men dealing with your own mental health. Now, as two women that I that I have here, you said that um have been through things when it comes with men and everything like that. So what do you think men should bring to the table to be prepared for your unspoken or untouched trauma that you haven't healed from yet. I'll start with you, Mari. <laughs> uh, 
I think I was, I think, I don't know. I don't think I bring my, my trauma into my, I'm one of those hopeless romantic people. And I'm mm. like one of those, give everybody a chance and then give everybody a second chance. And I kind of don't uh, apply. And I, maybe this is my, this might be a bad thing, but I, the life lessons that you learn, like you don't just apply that to everybody, you know, just cause somebody get an attitude with you. Maybe they just having a bad day. Maybe he's not going to like slap you around just cause he got attitude. Cause I, I've done that before, but now I don't do that no more. Like just cause someone's upset or just so just cause someone didn't answer their phone. It don't mean that they cheating is you, you just can't bring that stuff into your, uh, into your next partnership, relationship. So the person, if somebody were to come into my life, dealing with me after I, I understand what I've been through, <clears throat> is just treat me like you would want your sister to be treated, like you would want your mother to be treated. Uh, communicate with me. Don't expect me to, to know what you're thinking or what you're feeling. Because sometimes we are living in different realities from other people. So mm -hmm. communication and then just treat people the way you want to be treated. And that's it. If you don't understand, like, me as a woman and how should I treat this woman, ask me. Communicate. And that's mm -hmm. pretty much it. And, we, and, and we'll be good. Mm -hmm. We'll be good. But, yeah. Before, yeah. I, let, before <laughs> I let you answer, honey, you said I had a good friend of mine. You said I was that I talked to and he was uh he's basically he's in a counselor he was in a, he um he deals with people with mental health issues whether it's with, with the military or whether it's people on the street and he was basically telling me bruh it's you you don't have to know everything it's okay to tell your wife I don't understand you at all but I'm willing to learn and I said that but what about, about a week ago and it's, it's something that's actually helped us and he's like I'm not even gonna lie to you it felt so it felt like such a strong kick to my ego to sit there and say that I don't know something because you saying one of the names she's always given me is the Google master. If I don't know it, I'm going to Google it. I'm going to figure it out. You okay. just like, and so like to me, to bring myself to say, honey, I don't understand you, but for this marriage, I'm willing to learn. That was the hardest thing in the world. So you said just you said with, with our guest, Mari, I just, just want to put this out to the world. Yes, that was hard as fuck. Just. <laughs> Life is hard, and life is hard for women too. Mm -hmm. We have pride issues too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I know I can speak for myself. Like, man, I feel like when it comes to meeting a woman, and okay, we've been together for eleven years, and that, I met him shortly after I lost my brother, and so oh. early on, he gave me that safe space. I could say whatever I wanted. I mean, I could cry for hours if I needed to. I could vent. I could open myself up and not worry about like, is he looking at me differently now? Is he going to run from me? Does he think I'm crazy? We grew up totally different. Oh, I thought she was crazy lies. as hell. I'm not even going to cap to you. Lies. <laughs> <laughs> but we have a, we, we are, we grew up in total opposite mm -hmm. sides of life completely. So and I came with a lot of trauma, a lot of, a lot of unhealed things situations and he didn't run so i'm like okay you gave me this safe space right away so doing that i unleashed everything all the time on him like i would like when he would when he was over the road driving and stuff i literally sometimes would call him and talk for hours and i'm talking about nothing and everything it's like he gave me the safe space safe space to vent to cry, to show every side of myself, to be vulnerable as heck. And that is hard because I've always been more like, more, um, maybe not even introverted is the word, but extremely private, which is weird because I would be like that in my relationships too. Like you don't have to know every single thing. I don't have to open up. I didn't learn how to communicate properly. I learned how to talk at people. And so I was very aggressive with all that. And here in our marriage, we just, we just made eight years, but we've been together 11 years. And for the longest time, I'm barely starting to understand now that it's best for you to heal yourself before you go seeking mm. or searching for a partner. Because if you don't, mm. situations can come up in life that trigger certain things that you thought you were okay with, or you thought that you had let go and you had healed from, and that wasn't the case. And for me, that's been the case. Like I never healed from a lot of things. I just kept going because mm. I was a mother and I felt like that's what I see my mom do my whole life. So 
I'm a mother. I have no choice. I can't sit with my pain. I can't go to counseling every week. I can't I just have to provide. Even if I'm not okay. I mean, sometimes I would go to work crying on my breaks. Um, I wouldn't be there mentally. I sometimes I didn't give my all at work because I had so much baggage and I always felt like I didn't have anyone to turn to. So when he gave me that um, and I felt safe, it still was a challenge because now I have to let you know all of my struggles, all of my flaws, all of my weaknesses and hope that you don't use that against me at some point. And I'm not even going to lie to you. You see, you see these big ass ears. She has talked these motherfuckers <laughs> off. I'm shocked. They still there. <laughs> Is talking that's mother. sometimes that's all we need sometimes like, we just need somebody to be like uh-huh how does that make you feel come give me a hug give me a kiss just love on us that's sometimes just what we need i feel like that might just be the cure to trauma it's like just love like real love and sometimes it is yeah just that <clears> real <throat> love yeah even if i'm crazy or even if i grew up totally different than you to still mm -hmm. love me anyways gives i feel like a woman motivation to want to see her flaws and want to figure out well, how do I need to go about this? How can I be better? Because when you're living your life in a in a uh, like in a shell, thinking like there's nothing wrong with me, I'm strong, I'm good, I'm taking care of my kids, I don't have to do anything. Um, it's hard when you have to realize that that's not true. You do need to be well. You do need to be healed, not to just be in a relationship, but also be a good parent. Because oftentimes, yes. sometimes I'll be parenting my kids from a space of. Oh, I got to be at work in five hours. I'm not even paying attention to your homework. I'm sitting here with you, but my mind is not there. A lot of the times yeah. my mind will be elsewhere, but I will be physically present. And I realize like that causes a lot of damage because as kids get older, they do realize, they do know like, yeah, mom, you helped me. You were there, but you weren't really there giving me your time and attention because you're so mm -hmm. disturbed by past things, unhealed trauma, life itself, maybe not getting help from the other parents, so much baggage. And so if you don't deal with yourself, if you don't heal yourself, it's going to affect every area of your life and not for the good, you know? So I think for myself, and I always tell him, if I would have known I was going to meet you, I mean, I would have surely done the work to heal myself first so that I could have came to you clean and whole. But I didn't know that. Right. <laughs> I don't know if I necessarily agree with that, because I think you said that God's will was, was possibly done. And you saying I came in, you saying it's, as much of a roller coaster as it's been, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, I'm still here. She's got me held hostage, y'all. I'm, I'm blinking. <laughs> Sometimes no, we let we let what's going on or what's happened to us stop us from being with uh, somebody good that God wants us to be with. So that's yeah, a a big you thing. But you said, you, I feel the relationship. Huh? Uh, go ahead. I'm gonna let you finish your statement. Oh, uh, the relationship I'm in now, I feel like when I came into it, I was good because I, I literally, I had like a, uh, it wasn't a year. It was like maybe 10 months where I was just like, I ain't dating. <laughs> like, it's about me. I like going to bed. I ain't got to worry about nobody cheating on me. I ain't got to worry about nobody like talking to me crazy, embarrassing me, nothing. It's just me and my kids. It was just, it was a good time. And then when I got with him, I felt like, <clears throat> maybe he needed that time in between his relationships to kind of heal the traumas that he been through. Cause I feel like we have a really good connection, but I feel mm -hmm. like you could have a better connection if we didn't have to like sort through all the baggage. But that's the beautiful thing about being humans is like, we can help each other heal. I don't like when people say like, Oh, like you, if you can't fix that person, you can't fix them, but you can help them heal. Mm -hmm. But they have to do most of that work themselves. They got to know before they even come in a situation there's a problem. Because if I got to tell you the problem, then you might get upset with me. Then we got to fix the fact that you're upset with me. Then we got to fix the, the, the fact that you got a problem. And it's just a lot. So being healed before you come into something, that is important. That is very important. Definitely. It is okay to need someone as well. I think a lot of women have that tough exterior where it's like I don't need a man I don't need your help I don't I don't need I don't need and mm. the more you do that the more you block anything that you possibly could have and it's a beautiful thing and I don't think women should raise children especially <coughs> raised with that mindset I don't need a man I don't need you I can do everything by myself I don't need I don't need it that's that's the biggest lie I feel like that, yeah that should be a temporary thought 
I don't need a man. Right. Like that should be like when you break up initially and you're crying. You know, I can't live without him. No, you don't need that man. Okay. Work on yourself. But I feel like a lot of people, they don't know when to cut that feeling off and they let that feeling become part of their personality. And now you got all that masculine energy because you don't need a man because now I'm partly my own man, you know? So and going back to going back to my good brother, you said I there's a comedian friend of mine by the name of Tyrone Gaines. Make sure you check him out. He was actually just on the Michael Collier show not too long ago. He said, I don't see this masculine energy women. Out of you saying like you're just a jerk. You said let's let's just be honest. You're you're a jerk. Do you, do you believe that though? Yes. Yes. I actually do. You said like I don't you don't have masculine energy, you, you're just a jerk. You said, and I like <laughs> I'm just gonna pose a it question. Is a it's a difference. You said, yeah. They to torture yeah. my baby. Oh, no. Just bring her here. So I'm hearing her crying in the other room. Oh. Come on, Chucky Mommy. What can I do to my baby? Oh, she got happy now she see her mom. Okay, sorry. Oh, <laughs> right, she is gorgeous. Thank you. Now you said now like I'm just gonna pose this question because you listen. So I know I know you're moving and everything. You said we got a lot of things mm -hmm. to do. You said um, you know, it's like one of the last things before we get out of here. You said it's like now as far as you said masculine women. You said you think of you said studs. You said or, you know or lesbians or whatever. How come all these studs? You said they want to be hood niggas. How come not, how come none of y'all assholes want to be gentlemen? You said what's up with that? I don't know nothing about that. <laughs> I'm, I'm just feminine. Okay? I can get a little, I can get a little ratchet, but I don't think my ratchet is manly. I think my ratchet is right. Yeah. It's it's more like a mama bear. It's not even like ratchet. It's more like mama bear. I'm defending myself or I'm defending my kids type thing. But I don't mm. I don't know nothing about the the whole LGBT stud mem. <laughs> yeah, I, just, I just wanted to pose that joke you because I used I <laughs> I'll see you. I, I moonlight as a comedian from time to time, and you just like I, I got some jokes, but you know what? That's neither here nor there. And the last question before we get up out of here that I want to touch on with you, you some wonderful ladies, is that um, once you go from that, you send your your single days when you send when, when you with your you send your girlfriends, whether you send whether or not everybody's positive or whether you send your your crew is in there. I don't need a man and happy Father's Day, blah 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 blah. Now you enter into like you saying you're engaged. We're married. Now you said now both of y'all. I'm pretty sure have had friends you might have had to cut off because, oh girl, well you can't do that no more because you're saying you you got a man. So how how do y'all deal with like friendships that y'all that y'all had to cut off because of your relationship because they st your friends still want to do single hot girl summer shit. I have one friend that does her hot girl thing. And she don't really talk to me about it like that at all. Cause I'll tell her like, I'll listen to it, but I'm not going to be a part of it. And I'm not going to praise it. That's just how I feel. Cause like I said, like you have to be aligned with the will of God and, and God is not with the encouragement. If you need somebody to vent to <clears throat> about the mistakes that you made during hot girl summer, that's fine. I still got a little ratchet in me. I'll listen to you. I'll tell you where you went wrong. <clears throat> but I, I've not, I've, I haven't had friends cut off like that. I have to cut friends off for other reasons. So I don't, they don't really make it that far. <laughs> <laughs> they don't really make it that far. But I do feel like it's a, if you're going to have a friend that's into a certain lifestyle, you have to know what type of man you have. So if your man is okay with your friend doing her thing, my man is not okay with that. So me and my friend, we just, it's a, it's a phone call thing now. It ain't, we hanging out or nothing like that. He's old school. He's 45. So it's like, but oh, he's 46. He just turned 46. Oh, he's old. My brother. So, <laughs> he's, right there. he's like birds of a feather flock together. He's from Chicago. He has a he has another saying that I cannot remember, but it's just like one of old school sayings. And he's never, never. It's it's basically kind of like birds of a feather flock together. It's yeah, basically association that. brings on assimilation or something like that. Yeah. And I'm not about to fight him about it because I feel the same way. I do. I feel the same way. You start getting influenced, and it just depends on how, how headstrong you are. But I don't want no doubt in me in your mind that I'm out here having a hot girl summer because I'm hanging with a hot girl. <clears throat> mm -hmm. No, we'll keep it on well, the phone. Exactly. How do you feel about that, honey? Um, one, um, we're adults. 
if I feel like I have to explain to you that I'm married, I'm not doing X, Y, and Z, that's not my thing. And if that friend is not married or in a relationship and they have the free will to do whatever, that's on them. But if if I have to explain that all the time or I have to constantly remind you I'm married, my life is different, we just have to, we, we are not meant to be friends, but we don't have to be enemies. We're just not meant to be friends. I don't have the patience to try to make you understand that you need to respect my marriage. That's a lot. Like, and, and I've had a few friends like that where it's like, I don't, you, you grew up with me. So you can't see me as a married woman because you never seen that happening just as I myself felt the same way, but that's what it is. Therefore, no, I can't do the same things I was doing when I was 20 and 21 and unmarried. It's just that way. Now, if you can't respect that and it always has to be explained and broke down to you, that's exhausting for me mentally. It's it, I can't even look at you as a friend because now I'm building up the resentment. Like, why do I have to make you respect my marriage and stuff? Why? I don't. Then that's not even a friendship I have because we can't be real friends. There's going to be resentment on my end and you're going to feel it. Yeah. absolutely and i'm not doing life with you we're not raising kids together we don't live in the house together I, I, that friendship can't be that deep <laughs> <laughs> exactly. absolutely no you're saying I, I, like i said we know you got to you said you got to roll because you said you're moving and everything we trust me we're in the same process ourselves you know what I'm saying like next time we yeah. next time we sit down because we're oh we're going to do this again we're going to have a whole panel of people <laughs> we're going to do this again my background's okay. going to be different everything is going to be it's going to be all different but you said um before we get out of here, get, uh, give everybody your social so they can get in contact with you if you're saying they like what you're talking about you, so we can go forward. Okay. Uh, like IG? Yeah. I am the dot Marie Quesada. That's M-A-R-I-Q-U-E-S-A-D-A. -A. That's Instagram. And that's all I, that's all I have, I think. I got TikTok, but I don't, I don't remember the TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> my TikTok is on my Instagram, so I, I don't oh, remember. Boom, there you I don't go. use it like that. But, um, okay, honey, you want to give up your ID? Yeah. What is my uh my Latika dot Nicole one on IG oh. and that's L A T E C T A dot I P O L E the number one. And, and that's all I have. This guy right here, I am that guy Dub. You sent all this right here. This is little Dub. That guy Dub. You sent I'm pretty much everything. I'm Tyrone Dub Do Smith on Facebook. You can look me up. You were saying if you guys want to, you saying are interested in being part of a podcast, you said I'm very welcoming. You said I respond to all DMs. If your DMs is on foolishness, trust and believe, I am going to run you around in circles and giggle my ass off the entire time. So trust and believe all you fake accounts that are sitting there trying to sell me internet porn. I don't buy internet porn for any. Look at this right here. Do I look like I need to buy internet porn? Absolutely not. But that's it. But with that being said, I, I will engage in your conversation because it tickles the shit out of me. I'm just anyway. <laughs> without further ado, I love you. Tika loves you. Miss Mari loves you. Little Dub definitely loves you. <laughs> we out of here, man. Peace. All right. Peace. <laughs> Bye. Thank you so much. The boy Dub Deuce in the building.